One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Okay, if you are really into celebrities and embracing your wild side, then buckle up because today's interview is just for you. I'm so pumped up to share with you this interview that I did with a woman who is all about embracing who you are and that wild fire inside of you and just re-listening to our interview, I'm just, I'm so pumped up to share this with you because I bet there's going to be some little nuggets of something that you're going to find. So let's do this. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Because if you've been thinking about creating a podcast for a while, well, I'm so glad you found this show. Think of this as the shortcut slash time-saving version of searching Google and YouTube for hours and hours trying to figure out the world of podcasting. Trust me, as a busy mama of three, I get it. You don't have a lot of time to be spent or wasted, I should say, searching the web, trying to find all the right ideas and all the amazing things that are out there, and you just end up overwhelmed. Trust me, I've been there, done that, took home the souvenir. But this podcast is going to help you in practical ways because twice a week we'll be delivering episodes that are going to give you steps to help you create a podcast your audience can't wait to listen to. So let's get right to it, shall we? Have you been wanting to start a podcast? You've been thinking about it. It feels right. You just know this is the next thing that my business needs. Well, I encourage you to sign up for my five-day podcast boot camp. This is a thing that you have been looking for. It is a five-day video series where I walk you through exactly how to start, launch, and market your podcast. And I throw in some more information about 
planning strategies and being consistent and how you can make the most out of your podcast from day one. So sign up for our five-day Create Your Podcast Bootcamp at crystalprofit.com slash podcast bootcamp. And do it already. You know that you've been wanting to, so just bite the bullet and join us. So like I said in the intro, today's guest is going to help you embrace your wild side, give us a few business lessons, and just give you the ability to be a dreamer because I feel like Noah being um, raised in a different country and moving all over the world has a perspective that not everyone does. I mean, me personally, I've lived in Texas my whole life and I've traveled to a few countries, but seeing the world from a bird's eye view, I feel like can give you a very big advantage on seeing other people and reading their intuitions. And I think that that's what makes Noah so special. So today's guest is Noah Sade, and she moved to New York whenever she was 22 and launched her first business at the age of 26. Her jewelry brand, Lionette by Noah Sade, made headlines and was featured in a national and international magazine, has been adorned by top celebrities and influencers. She has a business that she started from nothing with her best friend and became a success and a leader in the jewelry industry. And you'll hear this in our interview, but this is not an easy thing to do. But she moved to Germany whenever she was 31 and started designing and running her New York-based business from afar. Her jewelry is all about empowering women, and after she had her first baby at 34, it took her from a passion of empowerment to a whole nother level. And that's when Noah decided to launch her coaching business, Born to Live, where she helps women who want to become famous in their field to get to rock star confidence so that they can get the recognition they always knew that they deserved and be the kind of woman that inspires and impacts a big, loving audience. She teaches women how to create a powerful brand so that they can say goodbye to worrying about money, and when they look in the mirror, they feel proud to see a badass businesswoman smiling at them in the reflection. She loves both her businesses so much and feels blessed to be able to travel the world while growing her passions and her gifts. But more than anything, she loves her family and her two-year-old daughter who's already been to 17 countries. Oh my gosh, y'all. I just, I cannot wait for y'all to hear this interview. So let's dive right in to my interview with Noah Sade. Okay, Ricky Podcast listeners, I'm so excited to introduce you to Noah. So welcome to the show, Noah. Hey, Crystal. Hey, everybody. So great to be here. Yes, I'm so happy. So Noah is actually joining us from Germany, which is so cool. I love having international guests on the show because I feel like you just bring such a unique perspective to everything. So I want to just dive right in. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you are, where you are in your journey today. Okay, I, I will try to fit as many. So really, thank you for having me. First of all, it's really, really great to be here. So I was raised, raised in Israel in a community. And community, just to say one thing about it, is that it's a place where everybody share their money. There is no concept of, of money. It's like pure socialism. And after leaving this place because it was too small for my dreams and my, you know, out of the box thinking, I traveled for a long time and I find myself in New York City, which is in so many ways the opposite of the social little community I grew up in. And New York was amazing for me. I could uh, um, launch my first business, uh, which is a jewelry brand, which I built with my best, best friend. And we really, really started from nothing, uh, really no experience, definitely no funds. We just kind of um, smiled our way through, you know, through the New York monster uh, fashion world. And it was such an amazing ride. Um, after 10 years in New York, I felt, I feel like a, a change of scenery and I took myself, plucked myself from New York and moved to, uh, to Berlin, Germany, with, where I really didn't know anyone uh, or any word, actually. <laughs> and it was really a beautiful adventure. And while I was running my business for afar, I really felt, very, very soon felt the need to, 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 
to take my passion for inspiring women and empowering women through my jewelry to take it to another level. And I launched my um, coaching business, which is called Born to Live, uh, two years after. And yeah, I love it so much. It's, uh, it's a dream come true. I get, to, I get to learn so much and connect with amazing uh, women, which are mostly also business owners. And I get to travel the world. And yeah, I love it. I That's hope that it so awesome. your question. Yes, it does. So how old were you when you initially found yourself in New York? I was 22. So you were 22. Oh my goodness. So I can't, New York is a dream of mine. I've still mm. never been. And I've told my husband Ooh. a million times. I'm like, we need to go to New York. Like that is my, oh, I just, I can't wait. I will go there. I, you know, one day and you'll have to tell me the best places to go. <laughs> yes. If you love food then ask me. I have a great list of food I, I always love send food. to friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. But I love what you said. You said you just kind of smiled your way through. So tell me, tell me more about that. Like, cause I, I am not a fashionista by any means, but I do have, um, we've had a few personal stylists on the podcast and, um, I have people that are in my family and other people that um, are very into fashion, you know, whether it's they've owned their own boutique or they just, you know, they have a passion for it. So how is it that you found yourself like, okay, I think I want to start a jewelry company. And you said you did it with your best friend. So kind of walk totally. us into that. So actually it was really a kind of a beautiful story. I come from a family of artists and designers. This has always been in my, you know, in my world. And I, I did think I'm going to design fashion. But when I left my home, I started traveling. For two and a half years, I traveled. I traveled Australia for eight months, then Africa for one year, then Asia. And I found that I have huge passion for stones. I just started collecting stones from all over the world. By the time I got to New York, I had a box full of stones full of opals, which you can totally see still in my jewelry. And um, I, you know, I was always a huge seeker of freedom um, since really, really young age. I was very independent. So entrepreneurship was really a natural direction for me. So I never really had a, my own, like a, a boss, you know. <laughs> so when I was 22, I immediately came to New York when, sorry, as soon as I came to New York, I immediately started working at the Young Designers Market in Lolita. It used to be quite big. It's not so glamorous anymore, but it used to be a, a place of, uh, just like it, uh, the name is, it's just a place of young new talents. We would open a table during the weekend and just sell the stuff that we made during the week. And that was my place for three years, way before I met uh, my friend and before we launched Lioness. So I had a little brand and... You know, the world, I felt like the world is saying yes to my jewelry. Like there was something that was just came really, really, um, really, really easy for me. And, and I had nothing to lose at the time. You know, I think there was a big deal, a big, big part of it. I was very young, no responsibilities, definitely no kids or anything. So just a good attitude I felt was, I always felt that New York is such a reflection to Everywhere, what am I saying, New York? Everywhere, but New York, there's so many people, so you really get to attract the ones that vibe as you do. And it's really one of those places that if you smile back, if you smile to it, it smiles back in a way. But, um, but yeah, but I kind of quit after a certain point. In fact, the more my little business grew, the more I realized that I am not so interested in the fashion world. I love creating, I love art, definitely love design, but I don't know how to talk about fashion. I don't know how to talk to stores. I, you guys have like a million names for the word bag. Clutch, <laughs> tote, whatever. I don't know, I had to learn all this. <laughs> but I come from it's just a bag. Anyway, um, I kind of quit for a while and I, I, I was a young girl with like made, the most money I've ever had at the time because I was working in markets and, and I took a break. I said, you know what, you know, you've been working since you're 11 years old. You're allowed to take a break. And it was really interesting to watch my guilt for not working for a while. It was very, 
very um, good learning curve about myself. Anyway, I took a break. I took some studies, uh, some philosophy studies. Then I met my, uh, my friend and she's all about fashion. Her name is Vanessa. She's awesome. She grew up in Chinatown and she's a total New Yorker. And um, after maybe three months of us hanging out together, I was thinking to myself, I wonder what is what this fashionista going to think about my jewelry. And she looked at my jewelry and she said, I'm going to quote, even though it's cursing, she said, Noah, what the fuck? Why haven't you shown this to me until now? I hope it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what she said. And she said, um, she said, can I, I can sell this for you. And she simply started taking the, the lot of jewelry that I had left from my times in the young designers market in Orita. And she started uh, selling it. And she started bringing me money. And after a while, she said, you know what? Is it okay if I take some of it? I said, of course, you know. And one day she, she had a few hundred dollars in her head and suddenly it just hit me from above. And I said, Vanessa, we're going to have a business together. And she said, okay. And that's, that's how it started. And it was really kind of, um, really rolled really, really fast. Uh, we created a, I created a collection and she started approaching stores. And we just had so much fun together. Vanessa and I have been to 16 countries together, not wow. including uh, um, all the states pretty much we are we just really had uh you know i'm so proud of so many of our achievements but by far my proudest thing is our partnership it's really really loving supportive egoless uh, uplifting and um yeah i love that and that's how it rolled pretty much <laughs> I love it because um, you're so humble because I y'all haven't seen all the pictures that Noah sent over of all these celebrities wearing all of her beautiful yeah. jewelry. <laughs> so how does Rihanna and Halle Berry and all these like super like uber famous people you it was in um, what was it Sports Illustrated like mm -hmm. just all these major magazines and publications worldwide like how does one who doesn't know anything about fashion and all of a sudden <laughs> have this partner and then it's like, Hey, by the way, um, Halle Berry has on our jewelry. How does that happen? Totally. You know what? Actually, if you ask about the sports illustrated, that is a story that I keep close to my heart because it was totally the magic of law of attraction. I, um, I got an email from them. Uh, they were searching for a teeny tiny necklace uh to you know take it to the beach and to shoot at the beach and as soon as i saw that name i was like i'm gonna make a jewelry bathing suit for them and this is that and that's that i was so convinced honestly crystal i think if you can you know measure thoughts with ounces i had these thoughts in just you know an elephant body weight right. i thought about it so many times i saw it so clearly that I'm going to design um, a bathing suit. And I kind of, I was really young at the time when it started. It, I think the first bathing suit I did for them, we, we did three uh, eventually. But the first one was, I believe, 2012. And that, um, yes, maybe, never mind the year. I was, I was young in the industry and I was not as courageous to kind of <clears throat> go out there. I had to kind of pick up my, my, F, my courage and said, MJ, that's the editor of Sports Illustrated. She said, I am going to show you my bathing suit and it will be beautiful. She said, yeah, fine, come over. She was so easy. I was like, really? So I was in New York. It was a few blocks away. I came over like trembling and kind of, you know, and she saw it. She said, oh, I love it. I like it. And I was so convinced that this is happening. This was really one of those, you know, you know it and it's happening. And so over the years, yeah, we had amazing models. And the last bathing suit I did was uh, shot on Irina Shark, Shark. I hope I don't even know to say the name right. <laughs> but she wore it so stunningly. And when I designed this bathing suit, it's like these beautiful stars, like the, like the sea stars. And I felt like I've completed this, my story with Sports Illustrated. And it was done. It's kind of passed away from me, kind of. 
Well, I um, saw that. I saw that picture and she looks like a mermaid. She yeah. looks like a mermaid with it. Like when you would picture like a mermaid with like some starfish on her chest, like that's exactly what she looks like. It's so beautiful. Crystal, you nailed it. The, the collection is called Mermaid uh, of, this, of this jewelry. It's jewelry inspired by mer mermaids or the color of this sunset. And this bathing suit, of course, it's not for sale. You know, it's, I told the guys, don't let her swim with it. She will drown. <laughs> it's very heavy. <laughs> and, uh, but that was kind of the creme de la creme of this collection. Uh, but it was really, really nice. I, I remember, you know, that, that kind of fiery conviction of working with Sports Illustrated. Where I come from, you know, it's, it's such a different world. It's so far, it's so unreachable. So for me, it was really a stamp in my confidence to feel like I've done something so out of reach, if that makes sense. And yeah. It served me like that. And then it was completed and I, I didn't, I, I just moved on, made, made space for other. <laughs> well, uh, I want to hang out with, with that thought real fast because that's very interesting to me because, um, I feel like a lot of people, you know, spend years trying to break into a market, trying to break into a market. And then, but I love what you said, where it's like, you know, I've done this thing, I've completed this part of my journey and now I'm moving on. So can you tell me more about that? Like, was it just that you knew that maybe you loved the work, but you wanted to do something else? Like, what was your thought process? Um, so actually, just to, to be clear, I was referring to my co relationship with Sports Illustrated. Oh, okay. Not, not just the jewelry. The jewelry, actually, I've also shifted. The, funny that you ask. It's also um, has shifted. You know, first of all, just, just specifically my business, my jewelry are such a niche. You know, the jewelry we make, you guys cannot see what I'm going to show. The jewelry we make are so, it's a small cake. It's a small, you know, you can only take a piece of a very small cake, you know, it's not, yeah, you know, like I said, it's a very, very small market. So I am, I was never into, when it comes to this business, I was never into having this going up line, you know, how would you call it? I want to, I want to. Just like a scalability or like a, yeah, in, yeah increased growth. Uh -huh. It seemed like we are, yeah, it, it seemed like we are kind of obsessed with that increased growth. And sometimes it's even out of the, the possibilities of your own niche. I was into building a standard. I was into building a um, really deep relationship with my clients, with my customers, excuse me, which is so important for me. And I'm really happy with carving this really beautiful piece of the cake and not expecting it to go up, if that makes sense. Yep. And um, Lionette, my jewelry brand for me is it's my first baby for sure. And it's a school, you know, and at the end I see business um, as business here is to, the business is here to serve my life and my growth and not vice versa, you know. So I see it as, as a way to shape my, my confidence, my, my humility, my, my kindness, etc., my professionalism. So yeah, there was, it's funny that you said it. it. I didn't say it about the whole business, but it's almost true also for the business. I still design three collections a year and um, really, really happy to have a close relationship with my customers, but it is in a different place than it used to be for sure. Yeah. That's so interesting. So now you have this in your heart to help and empower other women. So when did you go from feeling like, okay, I'm 22, lost in New York, I don't know what I'm doing, to now, um, has it just been like an evolution of building businesses and just gaining confidence? Like what helped you switch to, you know, I can turn around and help some other people along the way? Sure, so when it comes to being a, a curious ear for others, that was in me since I can remember myself, since I can spell my name. You know, whether it's friends, I always had this relationship of much older women being a friend of mine. There was something always that people said, we just love talking to you. After I talk to you, I feel good. After I talk to you, I feel I can do more. That was with me really since maybe the age of 12. Um, 
something that I remember. And um, I, I really, really love business. I love entrepreneurship. I love the creativity of it. I love the, the reflection and the mirroring of our you know, current state and energy. So naturally, I found myself over the years when people talk to me, I find myself kind of drifting off and, get, and handing them a business idea and they weren't even asking sometimes, <laughs> right. you know? And I'm like, oh my God, you should really do this. This is so brilliant and started to already planning. So I, you know, after I got the 10th person really pissed at me, um, <laughs> I realized that there's a pattern and maybe I should, you know, have an outlet for this, for this, you know, urge of mine. And uh, it took a while. I mean, I think every coach, every mentor has this point at the beginning that they said, who am I to give anything? I think every coach I've spoken to had that. I didn't know that, so I had to struggle. But I had two really, really good friends that don't know each other that really, really pushed me. They said, no, every time I speak to you, things are fine. There's something about how things you know, work. And the other one was about business that really encouraged me. When it was time to take that decision, I, I printed out, and some of it was actual letters, I printed out all the messages I've ever received that can support this decision. And it came out to so, so, so many. And I was just encouraged by it because it was a very, like, it's hard. I, I never studied it. I mean, let me rephrase that. I study every day. I learn. But that is all on my own. But I, of course, you get better every day. Yeah, but it took a, um, a big step. And at the time, I didn't have that much of social confidence. I was in a break point in my life, in, a, in, a, in my social life. So it was a lot of what will they think of me that I had to break. And again, today, I'm so grateful for, um, for this journey through, you know, through this fear. And uh, oh, I love coaching so much. I can do that all day. And if anything, I'm just so curious about people. I can just, I can just listen to, to women, to, to people's story. You know, I feel like I always say every human story can be a Hollywood movie. You know, every human story, just just listening to a person's emotions and thoughts is is fascinating to me. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Well, uh, I, yeah. I love that you said that because that's how I feel about this podcast. You know, when people ask, you know, well, who do you interview? And is there certain requirements? And is there this and is there that? <clears throat> and I just... I really think about that and I am the same as you. I love hearing people's stories because to you, to Noah, you may think, oh, it's just my life. Like maybe you think I'm not that interesting or I don't, you know, like why do you, what's special about me? But then, you know, you start digging and I love that you collected rocks. Like so real fast, like I have to say, I went to Australia when I was 16 or wait, mm. I might have been 15. And I was amazed by their opals too. So you said that about oh. opals and I was like, we have a connection. Like I loved, I bought an opal necklace for my mom and she still has it. And I just, I will never forget that because they were just so beautiful and such a beautiful yes, stone. Amazing. But it's just, I mean, that's what it is. Like if you hadn't shared that little bitty part of your story, then maybe we wouldn't have connected. Like now I feel like we're connected even deeper. Like even though I I'm, I'm so far from a fashionista, I don't hardly wear, I have like five pieces of jewelry that I wear. So it's like, you know, you don't like on the surface, it may be hard to connect with someone, but once you start to dig deeper and hear their stories, like you can absolutely connect with so many people. So, um, 
So that I was just really cool. more. I you might say that the opals in Australia are, are really this, the, the seed for my jewelry design. That's so cool. Uh, totally. They, they totally mesmerized me. And yeah. And you see half of my collection has opals. So. Oh, they're so there beautiful. Go. Oh my gosh. Y'all. And if, if you don't know what an opal is, I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to put some of Noah's jewelry up there and then I'm going to have to show y'all because the opals in Australia are just gorgeous. They're mm. so pretty, but, um, okay. So we've covered, you know, your jewelry and then your journey into coaching, but when did you like, did you just have someone come to you and say, Noah, can I pick your brain on business? Or like, what was the defining moment where you said, okay, like, I guess I'm going to coach people. Like, do you have like a specific moment where you kind of segued into this? Sure. Uh, well, to answer your question, all my life, all my life, people ask to pick my brain about business, about love, about their mother. You know, it's, it, I was always a counsel. I have so many people in my life who know nothing about me and I know everything about them. <laughs> Not their fault because this is kind of, I was always a, a, an ear and I guess, um, you know, I, I feel like sometimes I feel like I was born old. Sometimes I feel like, honestly, I, I can't believe I'm still alive. It seems so long since, <laughs> since I was born. I don't know what there, um, I don't know. I guess I was always super positive and just free. And I think people, when you're free, people feel freedom next to you. And I, I don't know, I feel this freedom that all people have when they're like, whatever, just kind of live it. Um, so, so yeah, and um, I had, I guess the defining moment was I was in Costa Rica traveling. My baby was just, just, just born. And um, I was sitting with a friend of mine and we were kind of redesigning her business. And she was like, you know, this is mind blowing. And she said, girl, you need to charge money for this. And suddenly it kind of sprouted in me. And I said, wow, what if I do? Would it be fun for me? How would I feel? And suddenly I just felt more and more in love with this idea. And I truly, I just love it so much. I work with, with women who have, who have brands, who, um, who, are, who have personal brand, who they are the person behind the brand. And the way I do business is very much with your feminine wild side and and to go back to to your question about how did I get to Rihanna and Halle Berry and all of that it's actually because I think the jewelry are so outstanding and passionate to, Rihanna actually saw it in Cosmopolitan she saw the jewelry and they called me and they said is it okay if we give it to Rihanna she's asking for it and I was like mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <clears throat> So she really, she actually saw the, the piece and she took many photos with it. So um, it's the same for, for my coaching style that, you know, I'm really interested to find that, you know, that wild side, passionate, feminine, raw part of you. And when I say wild side, I don't mean the kind of wild that gives you a hangover the other day. I mean that authentic, spontaneous uh, way of being with not that part that can be super kind, but not necessarily need to be so nice, you know, that part of you that commits to her anger and also commits to her kindness. And, and there's so much treasure in there for a woman. And I think this is really, really, really magnetic. And I think once we start dabbing and exploring this part of us, the outcome is really, it's really, really unique. No matter what you do, whether you're in coaching or you're in, um, I'm thinking, uh, skincare, I'm thinking about my clients or in jewelry. Um, and there's a way to communicate with this. I'm fascinated with my, with my profession and I, I, I really like can dive in all day. <laughs> Y'all should see Noah right now. She's just, she's talking with her arms. Like she is just, <laughs> I can see how fired up she is. Like she loves what she's doing. And this is what I love so much about this podcast is because when you interview someone who is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing at this time in their life, they can't stop talking about it. Like, and they are just so, you can't wipe the smile off of her face. And it's just so much fun for me because this is what I love to do. I love 
sharing women's stories because if you can relate to one tiny piece of Noah's story, then our job is done. Our job um, is done because it's just so, and I love you talk about the passion and the wild side because I feel that. Like I know exactly what you're talking about, but maybe someone that's listening, they're like, what are these two crazy chicks talking about? Like, I don't have a wild side. So what would you say to someone like that? They're like, I'm not that feminine. I'm not, I don't have a wild side. Like what, what would you say to someone who's listening right now? Well, wild by definition is just nature. You know, it's just your natural instinct. Um, I'm really, really interested in that, in those pieces of us that are, that were there before we were designed, boxed and tamed, you know, and there is totally a way for me to reveal your wild side, you know, uh, whether it's by asking the right questions or, you know, poking at the right buttons, but everybody has this wild side. We are not meant to be boxed yet society and especially the school system have to box us to make us, you know, easier to predict to make us easier to control. You know, you guys imagine the United States or the Great Britain have to manage all these people without the internet. Like, how the hell did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They had to keep us so, so systemized. And the wilder we are, the more spontaneous and dreamy we are, <clears throat> the harder it is to control us. So the system around us, really, really made it um, very, very consciously are boxing us. And it's not because they're bad people. It's just, like I said, it's just easier to, to handle the mess like that. And once we start breaking those boxes, and I'm super excited that we are really entering this new rise of consciousness in that way, when, um, when the, the people in control are not as fearful of our wild side. They understand that it's more productive, that our happiness and freedom is just as productive and creative, if not more, in my opinion. It's really, really exciting time to see this shift, even in corporation. You saw the old fashioned corporation and now you're suddenly starting to see Google or WeWork or even Zappos, which is totally, totally different vibes there. So um, that wild side is simply means that you learn to commit to the moment. You learn to commit to your emotion and your desire and to live next to them, to not resist to anything that's going on and to start reaction, you know, from your gut, from your libido, from that, you know, from that sensory sensation with the world, from your skin and your taste. And one tip out there, one simple way to start connecting with your feminine wild side. And by the way, feminine does not mean you have certain body types. does not mean anything. It just means that you're connected to your base. That's all. So one little tip I can give you guys out there for any woman that says, what is my wild side is to, um, I feel like the sound that we can produce that is coming from our wild side is the sound. Mm. So as you eat, as you feel something you enjoy, as you hear a nice voice or a compliment that mm, is really connecting us to, the, to those first chakras and kind of giving them life and giving them energy. And if actually that sound mm, is, is this lower, lower root, belly, gutty sound. So that is one way to start connecting with the present moment. It just means I am feeling what is now that, that sense, you know, that is happening right now. <laughs> that's so awesome. Oh, that's just so, yeah, you are very easy to talk to. And I could talk to you about all this stuff for hours because yeah, your friends were right. Like I can see why they come to you. They're like, Noah, can you help me with this? Or can we talk about this? Cause you just, you have a very interesting perspective on things. And I'm sure a lot of it is, things that you've learned, but I love that little tip that you just gave. I'm, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to be like, mm. Mm, okay. Yeah. I like that. I, it, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. <laughs> Great. I love that. Let me know how it went. <laughs> it will. Well, I want to switch gears for a second and I want to ask you, um, we have our keeping it real questions, which these we asked all of our guests, so they're just fun, lighthearted, but I just want you to give us your honest opinion 
And the first one is what motivates you on days when everything is just super tough. You've spilt your coffee, you're running late, like everything is just crazy. What motivates you to keep going on those days? Actually, I'm not trying to get motivated. I think, uh, I think the hard part is resisting. You know, I, I'm on days that are down, you know, I've been through enough ups and downs to know this is part of life. And those days that I'm down, I'm just taking it. I am, I'm, I'm, I, I had enough resisting that I'm supposed to be up and up all the time. I'm supposed to be motivated. No, I know it's the waves of the ocean and I am the ocean. It's, you know, it's not, it doesn't bother me anymore. You know, I kind of try to take it, but I do really experience downs. I'm just not resisting them just to be clear. Yeah. I like that. No, I love that perspective. It's just kind of, I love the ocean metaphor. That's great because it's, the tide comes in, the tide goes out. <laughs> oh, it's happening, you know, it's like, you know, we are, especially as women, we're so sensitive. We're so affected by the cycles of this planet. Oh, let it be. You know, I, I, I think it's our modern society that has any resistance to us being even tired, you know, imagine how much we uh, resist being tired. And I was like, oh, wow. I think it's harder. Like I said, objecting it is, is the hard part, not experiencing it. That's good. I like, I really like that perspective. That's really good. Okay. My next question is, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Hell no. <laughs> No. So not even in your jewelry? Like I'm sitting here, I've seen your pieces, like the one that you just like like you held up. Like is it just kind of you know when it's done? You know, I really I think a perfectionist is such a stuck word. It's such a stuck word. You know, I just believe in when it comes to creation, it's this splurge of creations. It's a glove. Um I just no, I, 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 I really don't connect to this word. I have nothing to do with it. That's so I amazing. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. I think when I see my clients, I think more than often, it's actually an excuse they tell themselves to not move forward, actually. And my, my mantra for them is we go with good enough. We just move forward. We go with good enough. You always can come back. It's never going to be perfect, you know? But when it comes to creation, I, it's kind of this state of mind, you know, this like, like an inspired moment is this state of mind and you just birth something and that's, that's there. And of course you can tweak it a bit, but there's something about that, that uh, birth of this really honest moment. I think perfectionism is, is so technical and so mechanical and I really don't connect with this word. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. She's showing me, she made this glove and it's so pretty. What is that made out of? This is made out of stainless steel that is covered with hematite. It's a stone we're melting and we're making it black. And these are pearls, mother of pearl. That's it's so really pretty. That's it's called Coltrane, like a saxophone player. I love it. You're so talented, y'all. And you should have seen before we started recording, she had on these big earrings. That were, she was like, I think they're kind of clicking. I'm going to take them off. And I'm just like, I'm in awe of your jewelry. They're all oh, thank you so much. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> okay, so I have one more question for you. And mm -hmm. that is, if you could go back and tell your younger self one piece of advice, what would you say to her? Collect flight miles. <laughs> I missed out on a lot of miles. <laughs> uh, wait, let me think of something more serious. What would I tell my younger self? Um, I would say, you know what? Um, I'll be honest, since I was so young, I had this relationship with my older self. I used to even in my, in my hometown, I, I had one place in my community uh, where I would see myself coming in because I was not a popular kid. I was like, I was not belonging at all. And I saw this woman come in and she's very cool. And she's like, oh, that's going to be good. And that's me. And she's, you know, she's living a really fun life. Um, so I always had this communication. So I tell myself a lot of things. What would I tell myself specifically? I 
Wow, I can't, I don't know right now. Well, I just love the fact that you're <laughs> just saying collect more flat miles. Like, I yeah. think that's good enough because, I that mean, was- I mean, how many countries have you been to total? I mean, I know you shared how many you and your partner, your business partner have been to and your daughter even. So, I mean, how many countries? Funny enough, I counted recently. I was in 48 countries. 48 countries, y'all. Yeah. That is amazing. (laughs) That is so awesome. So, yes, maybe just travel more and get more flight points. (laughs) I missed a lot of flights. That was, I guess, my first instinct. So, we'll stay with that. Yeah, go with that one. Well, thank you so much, Noah. This has been so much fun, but I know that people are just like, where can I see all of this jewelry and where can I learn more about Noah and her coaching? So tell us all the places that we can find you online. Awesome. It's so much fun talking to you as well. I feel grateful to cross back with you, love. Um, yeah, for sure. Well, <clears throat> most important, I would love to invite you guys to my Facebook group. It's called Born to Live. Um, maybe you guys can set up a link, but it's, of course, it's for free. And it's about doing business with this higher awareness. And it's a collection of really, really fascinating people. Yeah, just jump in and see what it's about. I, I would love to have you there. Um, my jewelry, yeah, they're online and they're so much fun. They're really kind of, you know, one, one comment I've heard thousands of times over the year about my jewelry is that women were saying, I feel the power, which was also something I took with me into launching my coaching business. And I'm like, how do they get it? How do they get it? And actually, before we ship off a jewelry, we invest a moment and a few words to put in the jewelry. And it was like, wow, these things really, really work. So yeah, the jewelry are really empowering and really fit for for that wild woman you can check it out um actually i just i just uh, published a really really fun book uh it's called 108 questions you should ask yourself before you lick a frog i have it right here you guys can <laughs> but it's really really fun it's simply 108 questions that really take you on this inner quest uh, something that you can do when you travel or before you go to sleep, kind of a question a day, kind of a, some questions are really amusing and some are really uncomfortable and it's made to, to bring some stuff from, from the darkness of the subconscious into the light of awareness and you can check it out. You can find it also in my group. It, it just costs like, it costs like a, like a cappuccino cup in Switzerland, only $7. All right, perfect. Yeah, and we'll put the links to it's your company is Lionet, right? Lionet. Lionet. So I will put the link to that. I will put the link to Born to Live, right? It's the Facebook group. We'll yes, put that in there. Yes. And then all of her coaching and just everything will be all in the show notes and you can check out. And I really encourage you to go follow Noah and join her in this journey because Y'all, she's going to help us bring out our wild side. I mean, who doesn't want that? So thank you so much, Noah. Thank you, love. It was really a pleasure spending time with you. Please stay in touch. What did I tell you about this interview? I knew that you would enjoy just Noah's story and her wild side. And I mean, come on, guys. She has made jewelry that has been featured in Sports Illustrated and Rihanna, and Halle Berry wear it, like, that's just, it's so amazing, and what a testimony to just doing what you're really good at, and just kind of letting everything else fall away, and I think that Noah's story is just so cool, I really want you to go check out the pictures that she shared with me, because it's just, it's so awesome, this bikini, like, we talked about it, but you got to see it because it's pretty amazing that someone created this and it's just, it's so cool. So go check out the show notes and find Noah's Facebook group and other ways that you can connect with her at crystalprofit.com slash episode 65. And you're going to find all of the show notes and everything um, that you need to do to connect with Noah. 
But that does it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If this is your first time listening, then I encourage you to subscribe to the show to listen to some of the other awesome things that we have coming up in the next few weeks. I would appreciate it if you leave a comment and tell me what episode has been your favorite of the podcast. But that does it for today. So keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.